Hi there! Today I'll tell you about the thermistor and the photoresistor. We'll burn to ashes and freeze to frost. We'll make use of a motorized Gary the snail and make a robot cook some instant noodles. And as usual, I'll be explaining the easiest way possible, so everybody will be able to understand. The electronics can work with electric signals only. It does not understand anything else. But what about temperature or light? Those can be measured as well. There are some sophisticated components for that. This is a thermistor. It is similar to that resistor that you already know. The main difference is that the thermistor's resistance changes when heat or cold is applied. Let's see. For demonstrating resistance shifts, I assembled this device. It measures the resistance and shows the value on the gauge. If the arrow comes close to the right side, to the MAD resistor, the resistance is high. To the left side, to the SAD resistor, it's low. Plug it into a USB. As you can see, there is nothing connected to the contacts, but the value is off the charts, showing very high resistance. There's only air between the contacts, it does not conduct electricity. The contacts are installed in a plastic housing, which does not conduct electricity either. That's why it shows a high resistance value. Now I connect the thermistor. The arrow jumps, showing its resistance. Let's try heating the thermistor with a gas torch. The arrow goes to the left as the resistance drops. Now it's low. I put the gas torch away and wait. The thermistor cools and its resistance gradually increases. Now here's a piece of dry ice. It's negative 78.5 Celsius. Wouldn't want to hold it in my hands for sure. I apply it to the thermistor. You can see how quickly the arrow starts leaning towards its right. A thermistor is equivalent to a resistor. But if you apply heat, the resistance decreases. And if you cool it, the resistance increases. Just for the sake of experiment, let us put in an ordinary resistor. Heat it. It just doesn't care. Oh, seems like I overheated it. Cool it. Same thing, no reaction. The thing is that the thermistors are made of a different material. Here's a nickel wire, for instance. Let's see. Some heat. It performs similarly to a thermistor. All materials have some electrical resistance. Some of them stable. Such materials are used for resistors. And some fluctuating. They are used for thermistors. With the help of a thermistor, you could make some fragrant and delicious instant noodles. We have a cup, a gas torch and some water. I attach a thermistor to the side of the aluminium cup and set the temperature to 90 degrees. When the cup gets hot enough, Arduino activates the servo and pours the water in our lunch. Look! Here it is! The robot made instant noodles. Bon appétit! Let's assemble a circuit for using a thermistor. First, I insert a thermistor in a breadboard. One leg in a positive and the other in a 12 volt bus. Now, a resistor. One leg to the thermistor and the other to the other side of the breadboard. I connect the other resistor's leg to the ground with a wire. Then a positive bus to Arduino's 5 volt with another wire. A third wire couples the thermistor with A0 contact. An LED goes in a negative bus and bus 1. I put the resistor to the LED. Connect the resistor to Arduino's contact 11 with the wire. The last wire couples a negative bus with Arduino's ground. Plug in a USB. And all there's left to do is write a program. 
The first line sets pin 11, the one with the LED, as output. The second line creates a box titled Sensor in Arduino's memory. The third command reads the ADC value and puts it in the box Sensor. The values read by the ADC may range from 0 to 1023. The fourth line creates a box Brightness. There it stores numbers from 0 to 255. They affect the LED's brightness. The fifth command seems very big, but it's very simple. It translates the number from one range to another. Not clear enough? Ok, look. The ADC we have has 1024 stages. The command shrinks it down to 256. Here. 1023 is now 255. This way the command map takes a number from one range and looks for a corresponding number in another range. The final command launches PWM on pin 11. Now let's test. I heat up the thermistor with the gas torch and LED's brightness increases. And when I apply a piece of dry ice and cool the thermistor, the brightness decreases. Here you can see a photoresistor. Just like a thermistor, it has adaptive resistance, but it reacts to light rather than heat. Let's test it. It's light in the studio, so the resistance is low. The gauge arrow is at the set resistor. I turn the lights down. Now let's use the dimmer. Less light. More light. Less. Can you see the arrow? Me neither. But it's there. More light. Can you see how the resistance changes according to the lighting? It's very high in the dark and low in the light. We thought it would be nice to make Gary the Snail a pair of eyes from two photoresistors. Well, Gary itself is 3D printed and painted. Inside it has two motors, a microcontroller and 3D printed wheels. Gary likes light. We have a flashlight. Let's see. The snail is pretty obedient. It's important that there should be no source of bright light nearby. Otherwise, Gary would get distracted. And that's just one of millions of ways to implement photoresistor in real life. Time to couple the photoresistor with Arduino. The circuit is the same. We just detach the thermistor and insert the photoresistor instead. Arduino doesn't care where the resistance comes from, light or heat. The ADC sees the changes in electricity and converts the analog signal into digital. So it can turn your lights on, or central heating, or even press a nuclear launch button. Whatever you program it to do. The code for the photoresistor stays the same as it was for the thermistor. I don't change a thing. Now if I aim light at the photoresistor, the LED becomes brighter. The less light there is, the dimmer it becomes. Now let's make some alterations. I interchange 0 and 255 in the fifth command. Let's see. Now the LED works the other way around. The more light there is on the photoresistor, the dimmer the LED. The less light there is, the brighter the LED. 
There will be quite a lot of lessons with experiments and cool electronics in each of them. You can go wandering around some stores looking for particular components separately or you can get them all at once on our website. There you can find everything we use for the lessons like Arduino Uno, breadboards, resistors, transistors, diodes, buttons, electric motors, servos, potentiometers, wires, loudspeakers, displays and much more. By the end of the course you will be able to easily understand not only the basics, but even the advanced microelectronics. You can find the link to our website in the description below. The next lesson will teach you how to control an electric motor using a transistor. We will even run the motor so hard, there will be smoke. And as usual, it will be the most comprehensive lessons on the YouTube. See ya!